the Fed FOMC interest rate meeting announcement stuff. Okay, so everyone's freaking out about what the market's doing because the Fed came out and said, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about what's actually going on here. And I have a chart that nobody ever shows you right here. Let me explain what how the interest rates are trading and what the Fed's actually doing and then what the market is going to do, maybe. <laughs> but we'll look at the market also. Um, yeah, so please like, share, comment, subscribe, and let's get into this chart, which is the Euro dollar futures, right? So I often look at the TLT trading, which is the American Treasury Bond ETF, which has a crooked line um, for some reason. But in any case, what I've been saying here is we are, well, we're going this direction right now. So according to the U.S. Treasury bonds, this is a move in the deflationary direction. And so, right. But in, anyway, the Fed comes out and says, okay, we're not raising interest rates right now, which the market loves. News blast, like the market's not going to collapse today. Um, and you see a big up move in the market, right? That's like a news reaction. But let's look at what is actually going on here. So... This is the euro dollar future market. This is not the US bond market. This is the entire world bond market. Like banks loaning, like a European bank loaning to a company in China. Like there's dollars created all over the world. And this is the treasury market for the entire world dollar system, not just the US dollar system, right? So the Fed is the central bank, the market maker for the US dollar system. And what they have is bank reserves. Bank reserves affect banks that are under U.S. law. And most of the dollars in the world are not created under U.S. law. They're created all over the world, right? And so the rest of the world banking system does not use Fed bank reserves. They use treasuries. They use treasuries in the repo market. All right, so let's look at this thing and let me explain interest rates, what's been going on here. So this is the same trend if you look at like yield spreads. I'll probably do that in a minute. But like generally when people look at yield spreads, they're looking at the Fed funds rate or the U.S. bond trading, right? And that's like great to show where it is. But this is where it's actually happening. So this is the international bond market trading to a deflationary lower interest rate spot. The bonds like increase in price. That means the interest rate's going down. And you see it's just like this kind of cycle, but it's trending towards zero the whole time, right? And it's kind of flattening towards zero. And this was the whole 2008 flat thing near zero. And now here's the since COVID flat thing near zero, right? And you can see this is like the reflation trade when interest rates go up here. It keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and just trending to zero. So... The last, the last Fed meeting, they came out and they said, we may need to increase interest rates soon, right? Like they're saying like they control the interest rates and they're deciding when to raise them, which is a load of BS. They do not have any control over this bond trading market and this is what drives the interest rates. All right, so here, look, like we're kind of coming flat, right? And we start trending a little bit in the other direction. So the Fed comes out and says, oh, we may raise interest rates soon, which means like, oh, we notice that it's trading the other direction. And once it trades far enough in the other direction, interest rates will be higher and we'll announce it. Not we control it, not like we're going to do this because of this or that. It's just where it is. It's a market that people trade and it controls the interest rates. So right now, let me zoom in on a daily the one day all right so you can see what just happened so like as I was saying we hit like a sort of a top and we started trading down a little bit so the Fed's like oh we may raise interest rates eventually now this meeting it has gapped down and it's actually started to turn over right so this is an inflationary move with higher interest rates if it continues doing that so now they're like oh like we may raise interest rates soon, they're guessing the direction that this is trading. It looks like it's trading down, so they're like, oh, we'll probably raise interest rates. 
But if it bounces back up here, they're going to be like, oh, no, we're not going to raise them. If it goes down here, they're just going to be like, oh, yeah, the interest rates are higher. Like, yeah, thanks, Fed. Like, I can see the freaking chart myself. I don't need you to come out and make an announcement about it. So, yeah, anyway, this is the COVID thing, right? Pop, boom, the flat interest rates. But just because it's starting to trend down right now does not mean that it will continue to do that. Because if you go back to the 2008 low interest rate environment, you can see here it rolled over, coiled, boom, straight back to zero interest rates. Rolled over, coiled, boom, straight back to zero interest rates. All right, so, I mean, if we pull down a bit, I mean, we may pull down enough where they announce a higher interest rate, and then, boom, it can go right back to zero. And they'll be like, oh, we, pu we pushed it back to zero because we're superheroes. Like, no, the bond market traded that direction because the world economy is in the toilet right now. That's what's going on. Let me look at the interest rate spread because I heard people talking about the yield curve inversion, which, and they're talking about the U.S. Treasury bond yield curve. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is like a 10 to 10 verse 2. What do I have here? Yeah, 10 to 2. This is a good one. Um, okay, so like if the, let me go to like, is there like a 1? Let's go like 5 to 1. I think that's what they're saying. Or like a five to two. I don't think there's a one. I don't know how to put in like the the shorter one. Oh, oh five, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So like people are saying the short end of the yield curve is inverting a little bit. Um, and so let's take the log off here and squeeze this thing. And where's the zero? Yeah, this is not even close to inverting. The inverting would be like down here near zero. I don't know what they're talking about. Um, let me go back. Let me go back to the 10 to 20 where I have lines. Or 10 verse 2, right? Okay, so here's, here's where inversion happens and where we are right now. So let me go to weeklies. Let me show like the yield curves. And like where a recession happens, <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't remember all of this. But in any case, see the, the solid red line here at zero is where the yield curve is actually flipping upside down. So when it flips upside down, that's a bad forward indicator. But a recession doesn't happen until you go steep again. So generally, uh, you can see the last three times we inverted back here, we went below this line. But the recession didn't happen until we got up here. Right, it inverts and then you drive interest rates up into a recession. Right, these are low interest rate environments when the yield curve is upside down. Um, so we almost like we we didn't even really invert this time. We came close to flat on the yield curve, and then like the COVID thing was supposedly a recession, but this little spot here is COVID. And it was like the shortest like recession in history or whatever, blah, okay, but so we started pushing up, right? And we're getting into the area where we might be going into recession territory. So I said this months ago, like we're pushing into recession territory. Um, but now we've pulled back and now the Fed doesn't know what to say because who knows where it's gonna trade from here? Like it could, it could trade down and actually invert uh, or we could push up from here, like straight into a recessionary environment. But um, the Fed doesn't know where it's going. They're guessing where it's going to go. Um, you're welcome to make a guess. You can see the chart right here. This is what they're looking at when they make their guesses and pretend like they're controlling it. Um, but in any case, that's what's happening right now is we are on the international bond market pushing an inflationary move for the first time since COVID in like a couple of years here. Um, so they're like, we might raise interest rates, which means it might trade that direction. So, yeah, anyway, uh, if it does trade that direction, then that'll be pushing this up, and that will be pushing us into sort of a recessionary environment. Um, but it hasn't happened yet, and whatever the Fed just said is irrelevant. It hasn't changed anything. Um, but the market will immediately respond to what they said, and it did. So let's go look at the S&P. Uh, let's put log back on. Um, let's look at the S&P. Our crazy bull, I'm um, still on weeklies. But anyway, you can see the 13-year the bull channel here. We're just like ripping, right? And we're at the very, very top of this channel, which is not like you immediately crash if you hit the top, but it's a resistance area that you definitely want to pay attention to. Um, 
Right, so, boom, we hit the top, right? Let me go into the hourly and show what's going on on a few different charts. Um, and I just showed, like, the treasury bonds don't really show. It looks like we're doing a deflationary move. The international bond market looks like an inflationary move. So we'll see which one wins. But right now, it's like, eh, we don't know what it's doing. Um, let me get on the hourly. Okay. Oh, did it pull all the way back in? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. So we get... <laughs> yeah, that's kind of right. All right. So uh, we got a news blast, like, gap up here on the Fed saying, like, oh, we're not... We are not raising interest rates right now. Like, yeah, no kidding. It has barely moved at all right now. It just started a move. Um, so the market gaps up on news immediately turns back over so as far as the S&P goes like this is not it's just kind of neutral still and if you can see on the momentum it's neutral you can see on the chart we're just we're just kind of testing the top of the channel and we're inside of the bottom of like this new zone so like the green line is like the bubble trend line and the blue lines are like the bull channels so um, I mean we're just yeah the S&P looks okay it looks neutral to bullish like slightly bullish but um it's at a resistance area and i mean for now we're just in here again fake breakout and we're back in just whatever that indicator is not that important but let me show you a couple other ones that are important um okay yeah so this is the nasdaq um i use the us 100 ticker because it trades after hours but look at what this is doing this is what I call a whale wall. This flat topping pattern is like big whales are like we are selling at this level until it falls. It runs into it, falls, right? Runs into it, falls, runs into it, falls, 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 falls. Again, boom. Like they're like, no, like this is our profit taking spot and you're not getting above here. Um, so as long as we're like holding under this zone, like the market can keep running into this until it runs out of gas and then it can flip over and go down to a support area uh, where they will buy back in, uh, at least somewhat. But anyway, this flat topping pattern is way dangerous on the NASDAQ. Um, this is, you know, you have the S&P kind of at resistance but not looking scary. The NASDAQ is doing a, hey, like this could be a major topping area. Not like a way long-term topping area, but like, a right now topping area like we can have a major pull down um, in the Nasdaq so if you look at the Nasdaq versus the S&P it's gonna make me go to dailies and you can see the Nasdaq was just pushing to like all-time highs relative to the S&P like Nasdaq as strong as it's ever been and it was chopping and that's like I don't know it doesn't really look like it's picking a direction but now it does look like it's picking a direction now it looks like the Nasdaq is going weak relative to the S&P so so if the NASDAQ is getting weak, then where's the money going? Because it's still in stocks, right? It's not like trending out of stocks into like gold or treasuries. Um, the S&P is fine, so there's still money coming into stocks. But if they're rotating out of the NASDAQ, where are they going? Let's look at the IWM. Uh, not here. <laughs> not here. The IWM is actually bearish. It's way down in bear territory, making bear moves in bear territory. Like the IWM looks terrible. So these are the high-risk small-cap stocks, the Russell 2000. They look straight-up terrifying right now. The NASDAQ is just starting to look weak, but the S&P looks okay. So it's like, well, everyone must be rotating into like non-tech defensive stocks right now. So that's a warning sign uh, on the S&P. So we could have a little pullback. doesn't mean a great, like, huge pullback, but, uh, yeah, I'm still not seeing, like, the melt-up scenario shaping right now it looks like a ton of resistance and the less stable the companies are the more downside they're getting right now um, and this should be relative to increasing the interest rates that's not helpful for the stock market um, yeah so those are the basic indicators of money flows you can look at the dxy um, holding strong so this is just the dollar stronger than other currencies but uptrends in the DXY uh, are generally not good for the stock market. Like, it's not crashing the market, but it's like, hey, uh, dollars getting stronger. Um, so you don't usually have ripping rallies in 
the stock market while the dollar is strong. So, you know, if the dollar makes a freaking crash move, like that's going to be a good indicator for stocks. But as of right now, it's picking up a bullish trend line and looking like it's going to break out to the upside. So this is not good for the stock market. It looks like it's going to bubble above this bullish trend line and climb. Um, and if it starts getting up here 100 or higher, like that is going to start threatening the stock market. So we'll definitely keep watching that. But this is a high risk zone in the general market. I'll explain a couple of trades that I have on uh, right now. Gold is considering breaking out like that is not a good sign for the stock market. That means people are coming out of equities in general and into other assets, gold, commodities, something like that. You can look at silver, not so strong. So alternative monetary assets, but maybe not the commodities. Um, and then Bitcoin is the freaking, the red flag, the huge red flag, right? Bitcoin, um, we've talked about the Craig Wright court case a few times, and I have a whole Satoshi Nakamoto playlist that I am put together. I think there's like five videos in there now. Um, but basically Craig Wright won his court case, like he's public now as Satoshi Nakamoto. A lot of people do not think he's Satoshi Nakamoto, and you can believe that as long as you want, but if he comes out with his patents and he starts filing fraud cases against the BTC developers, um, I just watched a video yesterday. He's saying like he does not want, you know, well-intentioned programmers to go to jail or anything like that. But like the BTC chain is not a fork; it's a separate chain. It's a fraudulent chain. And he has patents and he has legal rights um, to, you know, file fraud against them. And he's like, this, like, Bitcoin is not a system for anarchy. Like, that whole story is nonsense. Like, Bitcoin is a system for legal transactions uh, under common law. It's just, a, it's just a system for transacting. And then everyone gets a copy of the hash so everyone can verify that nobody's cheating, basically. That's how the whole system works. Um, but he said a couple of things that are very important legally. One, he said anyone that has been trying to use this public ledger system to do illegal transaction is going to be in for a huge surprise shortly because public ledgers are not a great way to hide things. Um, and as soon as the government figures out how to do their normal uh, money following normal procedures on Bitcoin, like they can completely go after anyone that's done illegal transactions on the public ledger. Um, and then also uh, anyone who has developed the BTC chain and you see people leaving this chain now because I think they know it's up um, can be. Well, I mean, they can. There's several. I mean, there's several like uh, legal problems here, like the code is open source, but the database is not like you can look at the code. It's MIT license. Right. So you can MIT is open source, but you can do patents and he has or he claims he has. Um, but uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens now. Like that court case is over. They ruled in his favor. And he's like anyone who's like looked at the MIT code and written something similar. That's fine. But like you can't take the Bitcoin blockchain and then go change the whole protocol and steal all of the data and all the coins in the database with it, call it a fork and call it Bitcoin. He's like, every part of that is fraud. Um, so this is the big black swan on Bitcoin and Bitcoin is where tons and tons of speculative, uh, you know, money has gone into. And so I think uh, the interest rates are a little threat, but like a big freaking black swan on Bitcoin is a huge threat. All right, so that's my general market outlook right now is I think Bitcoin is in big trouble. I don't know how soon that would start. Could start as soon as immediately um, because the court case is over. And right, so let me tell you the couple of trades that I'm looking at right now. I just went uh, super short on BITO today. I was waiting for it to trade up. Um, let me go back to the Bitcoin chart. But anyway, the BITO is an ETF that you can trade like inside of retirement accounts or whatever. It's a side bet to Bitcoin. Uh, they're derivatives that don't actually have any Bitcoin underlying. 
Uh, but they have like full options tradings that options trading that you can do on whatever Fidelity or E-Trade or whatever your platform is. Um, but in any case, uh, we've pulled down here and we're coiling. So usually when Bitcoin coils, it pops to the upside, right? So this is like, a, I was waiting to see if we came up to resistance here. But I zoomed into the hourly and I see, I don't think it's going to do that. We pulled, right? We broke both of these levels, stabbed through. So that indicates that it wants to come down. This is a whale sell-off. It wants to come down, but it's holding, right? But now it's doing a bear flag on this thing. So this looks dangerous to me. And I think it's more likely to break to the downside than the upside. So I threw a couple little putty putty puts on uh, BITO. And these are like out to like July or something. And so it has plenty of time to make a down move if it wants to. Um, I also did a couple of puts on today, like the contract that expires tomorrow, just in case it like collapses all of a sudden here, like overnight tonight. Um, but this is a dangerous setup and there's a long way that it can move down if it decides to break to the downside. Usually when you get this bear flag stab, you get a stab and a bear flag, the next move is going to go lower than that stab. Right, and so the next support area is around 30 to 35. And so that move could happen really fast if it does happen. And so the weekly put options are extremely high risk. Um, it's just like a tiny put bet for like a big leverage game. But the longer term puts are just saying like this thing's in trouble and I want to be positioned for that to happen. Um, so if you've been watching my channel, you know that I've been short Mara. Uh, for a minute, for like a couple weeks, I think. And where am I on hourlies? Let's go back to dailies. Uh, Mara picked up a an ugly, an ugly pattern a while ago. Like Mara blew the bull trend here, and it painted a down angle, right? So if you go back and look at my last Mara video, uh, this thing hooked up underneath the bear trend and underneath a major bull channel, right? So you're underneath two types of major resistance. And so I went in really hard short Mara there um, and it has traded down so far, but that's not the big deal. Like it is, looks like it's trapped underneath a pretty steep downtrend. Um, so this is, well, I think this, I don't remember what I struck at, but I think this is already in the money, but that's not the point. Like the point of this is Mara has the risk from the normal stock market as sort of a meme stock but like if a Bitcoin black swan happens, like this is already trading down, like a Bitcoin black swan would absolutely crash this thing. Um, right. And when I say Bitcoin black swan, I mean BTC, which legally we may not be able to call Bitcoin soon. Um, we'll see how the legality of all this plays out. But like even calling the BTC chain Bitcoin is potentially fraudulent. Um, right. So... That is the play that I had on, and I just threw a couple puts actually on the BITL on top of that. Um, although I think Mara may be able to percentage-wise take a bigger crash than uh, the Bitcoin chain itself. Um, if we just go back and look at Bitcoin again, just the technicals, not talking about all of that stuff, um, just the technicals on Bitcoin. We, you know, we're at the top of the ribbon, rejecting out, so. Um, anyone that thinks it's going to a million, oh, there was a glitch like the last day or two where the Bitcoin price actually displayed at like several million or something for a little while. It was like a, a glitch, but if you think Bitcoin is going to a million, it did. It already happened. <laughs> it's just like a fake glitch thing. Um, but in any case, we're just rejecting down off this ribbon. You can see the last time we rejected out of the ribbon, we came down pretty hard into, you know, a bullish support area or a bear channel and all of the bull channel support right and popped um, but this looks like we just crossed over a bear channel and rejected again so if we do go bullish from here uh, it's a few months of space where we would be running into the ribbon again and this would be like an ascending wedge kind of pattern which is a pretty easy bearish call to make um, but I flipped uh, from that point of view to like, oh, I think we are going to stay trapped under this thing. And if 
the entire like BTC fraud whole allegation thing comes out and it's true, everyone is going to freak out and just dump uh, Bitcoin. And so in the event that that does happen, uh, I have just some puts on just in case it does. Um, yeah, because like that's what you're looking for if you're buying a put. You're looking for a huge vertical move. And if you're buying a call, you're looking for a upward huge vertical move. Um, not investment advice. This is just what I'm looking at today. And then in addition to that, the general weakness in the stock market looks to be targeting like the small kind of zombie stocks. And so there's a whole slew of companies in different areas that are not profitable. And I think they're at risk. Like the NASDAQ may pull down a little bit, but like I think there's specific small companies that are going to really crash if we get a pullback. And I have picked, I mean, you can go through tons of these and there's probably some good trades on a bunch of them. But I've picked my favorite short uh, play to be Nikola. And I'll show that again. I've showed this in a couple of videos. Um, so this is like my kind of meme stock trouble short play because... Well, if you zoom in here, uh, just on the technicals, like you can see where the thing, it's a SPAC, not an IPO, and it came out around 9.50 or something like that. And then it traded up, and it's been doing a bear market. It has a false bull breakout here, right? So the bear trend is sort of holding, but we're about to, if we break to the downside, break below the entry point where all the early investors are now going to go upside down. So I think this particular stock just has additional threat to like any other random little one like this is a SPAC there's tons of allegations that their product is fake like the the truck video they made it was like rolling down a hill it doesn't even have a working engine like there's no product no customers no supply chain no infrastructure like the head person is like under investigation for criminal like securities fraud and all kinds of stuff like that so uh, this stock in general seems like one of the riskier ones that I could find but also the technicals um, we already blew our bull support here so it's a false bull breakout boom we broke under right now we're picking up a bear channel and now we're pressing down on the original IPO price so this stock just looked particularly dangerous uh, for anyone that's crazy like me that wants to like put the equities market this is how I'm doing it. I am putting and I am short Mara and short Nikola and now I'm short BITO, like shit, short the BTC chain directly. That's, I think I have a, a short on something else too. But anyway, like I'm just cash and shorts right now, which is super risky and everyone's going to say I'm crazy, but we'll see shortly if that's the case or not but anyway that's kind of what I'm looking at now in the general market is the positive news blast reaction to the whole Fed announcement is irrelevant because it doesn't change anything and they're just announcing like where the bond markets trading basically that's all the Fed is doing is just announcing and so um, you know the Fed they're a market maker so like they need to make sure that the market stays liquid and stays trading because um, like a monstrous market crash is very bad for them and yeah so let's keep it trading and let's see if uh, if we get in trouble here if I guessed correctly which things are going to come down the most because I think we're going to have a little down move here I've been calling for that for like a couple weeks um, but like, I don't think it's going to be like everything comes down. I think it's going to be very specifically BTC and a couple of these like zombie SPAC kind of things are going to really like crash out. And then we can, you know, resume the nonsense. Anyway, that I think is probably good enough for this video. Please smash the like button. Tell me everything that I said is wrong. Um, I've had like coming out and saying anything related to BTC or like Craig Wright. Um, has been getting like tons of arguments in the comments, which I encourage like start comment, like start arguments. That's fun. And it will also uh, increase awareness of the whole situation so people can research what's actually going on. There's just tons of nonsense out there. Um, but I would encourage people to 
go look at the actual court case information, which you can see in my videos. Go look up the theory of Bitcoin videos, particularly the playlist that is um, on the Satoshi white paper. Like there's interviews with Craig Wright explaining every single line of the white papers. Um, oh, and also Craig Wright has a freaking uh, copyright filed as Satoshi Nakamoto in America now. Um, check and see if that's true. Check and see the entire purpose and structure of Bitcoin. It's not in the legal crypto uh, system. It's a public ledger. And the security doesn't come from crypto. The only crypto thing is like you're hashing the block into like a little hash string. And that isn't about security. That's about the hash string. Anyone can check and make sure the block hasn't changed because of the hash string. And you can send that tiny little hash string to everyone using Bitcoin, like everyone in the world. And then absolutely everyone can verify it hasn't changed. So it's about scaling. You can have a huge block and all you need to do is send everyone the little hash code and everyone can verify that block hasn't changed forever after. Um, so the, the crypto part of it is just uh, for scalability. So you can have big blocks, but you're sharing like this tiny bit of information to verify them. Um, yeah, it's not a crypto even system. Like the crypto part is just, uh, it's for scalability. Like the security part is everyone can see like you're, you can, everyone has visibility of the chain and it's not private. It's pseudo anonymous where you're a real person transacting and it's a public ledger. So yeah, most of the stories you've heard about Bitcoin, you might want to go research exactly what I said, like the theory of Bitcoin videos, the court case, like actually read and understand the white paper, like look at coding on the blockchain, um, figure out how it actually works. And then, if all these fraud allegations start coming out in court and stuff like that, like heads up, like things are happening. Um, yeah. And uh, the BSV chain is the one that Craig Wright is saying is this is the Bitcoin from the white paper, BSV. Um, <clears throat> so go look at that. And I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of rambling now. But um, yeah, this is extremely important to understand what's going on right now because the bitcoin price is absolutely nuts and people are like oh go long you know bsv but like craig doesn't even think bsv should be valued highly like it's a system for cash it's literally a system for trading like less than a penny with super low transaction fees um, or doing any other kind of legal contract that needs like a, a public ledger um, that's what it is it's like a legal system for trading tiny amounts of money with low fees and it's supposed to just be, uh, yeah, it's just that. It's like a, you don't need a third party because everyone can verify. And you should be able to transact with tiny low fees. And that's just a huge improvement on any kind of like legal or transaction system we have right now. Um, that's pretty much the point of it. It's not hiding from the government or being super anonymous or something like that. Like it's literally like a legal public ledgering system, which... Sorry if that sounds like way boring, but that's actually what Bitcoin is. It's a public legal ledger. Um, yeah. All right. All right. So happy holidays and such. I've got my Santa rally, uh, <laughs> my Santa rally hat on again, or my hoodie uh, as a joke, because I don't, I think, I think we're running out of time here on a Santa rally. Um, I still think we're going to have a pullback here and maybe the last week of December we could, I'll, I'll get back on. If we come into like a support area that I feel really strong about, I'll come back out with the Santa rally hoodie. But, um, right. That's the outlook for now. Ask, uh, if you have any stocks that you want to take a look at or whatever. Um, for sure. Big things happening. Ignore the Fed's stupid stuff and just look at the chart yourself. I mean, you can see it. You can see it right here. GE, not General Electric, like the GE1 uh, Euro Dollars future contract. And yeah, right. So you can see this gapping move. And this gapping move is what they just announced in the meeting today. Like, oh, 
we may have to raise interest rates soon. Like, oh, okay. But what if it coils and goes right back to zero? Well, then they won't. Um, all right. <laughs> Cheers. Happy trading.